try to fight that. You know, we can't, we don't, we can't match them in terms of uh, resources and money, but we can match them and we can surpass them in terms of organization, mobilization, and our own political enthusiasm. Because we know we're doing the right thing. To stand up on behalf of the masses of our people is the only correct thing that we can do in this period. What else could we do? When we see uh, African Americans and other oppressed people uh, being denied even the basic right to vote, to participate in the debate about their own future. So we have to organize. We have no other choice other than that. So uh, that's why uh, we are here today. And I want to introduce uh, Marcina Cole, and uh, she is a retired um, employee of. I, I didn't want to mention them. <laughs> One of the worst racist corporations I can talk about in this country. <laughs> That's, the meeting's not about that. <laughs> but come on up. Let's have a warm welcome. Bobby, I pretty much said what I was going to say. I want to thank uh, Reverend Pinkney and his wife, Mrs. Pinkney, for coming all the way over here to be with us uh, this evening. I worked real hard trying to get that money together, Reverend Pink. Now, I collected almost $600 and hundreds of other, uh, hundreds of dollars coming in here, you know, and I said, we want to take that bus, not no carpool this time. I got your back. All right. Some of your friends didn't, get, didn't have your back. I got your back and we do too right here. Because we believe in justice, no more persecution of black folks, folks of color, with the people around here, some of the white people across Michigan and across this nation have been targeting uh, minorities and it must stop. We are in the court system and the disparity of justice is insurmountable. I know about that, been there, done that with friends and family members. So Reverend Pinkney here today is not all about Reverend Pinkney, it's about all of us. I'm pretty sure you all can share a story about the injustice going on across this country for the militarization of the police department and they they calling folks terrorists. I know what a terrorist is. We got police terrorism. We got folks that's terrorizing neighborhoods and take, shutting people's water off. What is that? Sound like some terrorizing to me? Taking folks' houses, thousands of people don't have a place to stay, being kicked out. Water shut off, don't have food on the table, don't have health care. Come on now. This barrier from the poor to the rich must stop. We need to mobilize. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what uh, organization you are uh, affiliated with. We need to come together. And we need to stop listening to the mass media about who our leaders is. And we don't need to be... Alienate folks because they're moving whatever kind of religion they are. It's not about that. We are suffering as a people. I don't care if it's Palestinians or whatever. They're getting gunned down from the sky and they got little rockets in the Gaza and then the Israelis are shooting down at them and then they talk about them because they're trying to defend themselves with little bitty rockets and killing babies and, and men and women and children. We shouldn't stand by that. We all connected around here. Got Ebola in Africa. Come on now. And the United States was all concerned about some two nurses mm. that. But we got thousands of people got all right. uh, killed from Ebola. Our people up in there. We should be concerned about everybody, not just two folks, because they're Caucasian. The man, the Liberian African man, go get help because he was sick after he got off the plane. And he went to the Texas hospital. They released him. Hello, he come back. Well, you know he had a bullet. He's not here today because he didn't get the same treatment that some of the doctors had gotten when they came from uh, the country where they had Ebola. So this disparity of justice going on, we all are connected. Amen. Not just, you know, even Benton Harbor, Detroit. I live in Oakland County. I pay a high water bill. I pay it. And then three weeks later, I got another three hundred dollar bill. Something wrong with that picture. That's right. So we need to fight for what's right. That's right. You know, if you can't walk, you can talk. Amen. So fight for your people, like your life depends on it. I'm gonna fight until I stop breathing. How about you? Amen. Okay. So let's get together. Rosmia, she's a Palestinian. She's been here since how long? The 60s. 
She's been here a long time. She's faced with years and years of prison and deportation about something that she didn't put on her immigration papers so long ago. Come on now. And so they, so anyway, the federal court, and they'll tell you more details. But my point is, we gotta, we gotta fight for Rock Mia too. And then I can just may say this. I'm telling you about all this despair. I'm just gonna connect to all this when it comes down to Daniel Brown. When you got Marisa, Mar Mar Melissa Alexander, whatever her name, Mrs. Alexander, she shoot a warning shot, and she faced up to 20 something years. But then you got Zimmerman. He comes out his house and say he was threatened. How do you be saying you in your house, you come outside and approach a young black male that did nothing, was, didn't even have a weapon? Then you got Michael Brown over there in Ferguson. He gets gunned down by the police. He gets off. It's too many folks getting off for killing our babies. And we shouldn't roll over and play dead when it happens. And it's continuing to happen. St. Louis, same thing. And we just get so complacent. Oh, well, go to the next. Uh-uh. Fight, fight, fight. Don't stop, because another situation is going to come, and it might be just your baby. So it shouldn't be about your baby or who you know. It should be about, don't, we are human beings now. For years, we were told we work. Love yourself and love your people, no matter what color you are. Amen. And on that note, I want to... <laughs> I want to give this uh, mic to renowned community activist. He fought the fight and he had a lot of nerve, they say, to talk about NAACP. But he did that. Because I know NAACP ain't with me. But he know about it. He challenged them folks. Them ministers got mad with him. You got, look, some ministers, black ministers, don't, uh, ain't supportive about Rev. Pinkney because he speaks the truth. And Ben Harper trying to silence him like they do when we talk. You know how they do when we activists. They want to shut you down, lock you up. But we, we got his back. He had to go to court this morning. And he'll tell you all about it. On that note, please give a round of applause to Reverend Edward Pickett for being hard. Thank you.